Hi guys, uh, my name is Dane, um, and I like to chill, okay? I like to relax. All right, the first thing I do when I walk into any room is look for a place to sit. I, can't, I honestly can't even tell you how much of a fuss I made last time I had to teach in the studio and they told me I couldn't have a chair. I made such a fuss, I literally I hit them up, the whole studio team up this week. I was like, what do I gotta do to get a chair so I can sit <laughs> for 15 minutes? I can't even, it's too long to stand, apparently. Um, and there was a lot of work. I had to haul this thing from a warehouse out of storage. It's a lot of work to be this lazy and as lazy as I am. Um, but man, I just like to chill and I just want everyone else to be chill and just relax and just to get along and just to be at peace, man. So this is gonna be a very chill time together, okay? Wherever you're at, just sit back, relax, kick your shoes off, okay? Don't, you don't even have to take notes. Don't take notes. Don't do any work. It's been a long week. It's been a long year, okay? So just let's all just chill and rest for this time together, okay? We need it, I love it. Um, Cause what I desire more than anything is peace, okay? I, I desire peace, I desire peace um, in the world around me. And out of my desire for peace though, I struggle with this core sin of laziness. And if you've been following in this whole series, every single week we've covered this kind of core gift and this core sin that goes with it. And for me and for many of you guys, man, um, we're gifted with the desire to see peace in the world. But man, from that, there's this sin and this struggle of laziness. And man, I can just be so lazy. I'm like the opposite of a workaholic, honestly. I have no problem not working. That's not an issue for me. <laughs> I'm like really, really good at just checking out. Honestly, sometimes it's one of my bad character traits, but when I have too much to do, I'll just take a nap. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's a lot of work. Thinking about it is making me tired. I'm just going to take a quick power nap. Um, and that's just kind of how I live my life. It's not good, but yeah, I can be super, super lazy. I know there's people, I've met people who are like, yeah, I like to get up at 5 a.m. and jog, which like to me, the thought of that makes me want to throw up. It's, it's like my personal hell, honestly. I can't even imagine anything worse because <laughs> I love sleep and I love rest. Um, and so, man, we're going to talk about laziness, man, what laziness is. And so we're, we're going to dig into this Bible passage, okay? Um, and I'll just be honest, okay? I, I hate it. I don't like it at all. I, I read it, and I was just so bummed out when I read it. <laughs> and, I was like, and it's been a while since I've read something in the Bible that I just felt myself in such opposition to where I was like, man, do I even agree with this? Am I even a Christian? I went into like this whole crisis earlier this week of like, man, can I accept this? Um, and so, we're, and it's the words of Jesus. And so it's like, all right, man, let's dig into this. And so what happens? It's in Matthew 25, okay? Jesus tells this parable. I, and he's talking to his disciples. He says, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. And he tells this story of this master who's going on a trip and he has these three servants. And he gives one servant five bags of silver, another three bags of silver, and, one, and a third servant one bag of silver. Um, and while he's gone, uh, the guy with five bags invests it and doubles it. He gets 10 bags of silver. And the second servant get, you know, invests it, doubles his money, gets six bags of silver. And the third servant, he's so afraid of men possibly losing this money that he buries it in the ground until the master comes back. And so... The master returns from his long trip and he goes up to his servants. He's like, hey, what'd you guys do with the uh, money I gave you? With the, with the gift I gave you? Um, and the first guy's like, hey, I doubled it. I got 10 bags of silver. And the guy's like, I got six bags. And he gets to the third servant. And this is what we'll pick up. It's in Matthew 25, verse 24 through 30. Then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose the money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, look, here's your money back. Take it back. And this is the response, okay? This is the master. This is Jesus in the response. The master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. I lost my spot. You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you at least deposit my money in the bank and you could have at least gotten some interest on it? Instead, you did nothing with it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant. Give it to the one with 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's hell. Okay? I read that. And I'm like, geez, God, what? That just seems so harsh. It's such a harsh response. It's pretty rare for man Jesus to have such a harsh response to people like this, especially when it comes to their sin. And especially reading this as a lazy person, I'm like, well, geez, man, there's worse things he could have done. 
right? And it was just so hard for me to accept this, to think, man, what is the big deal? And man, anytime, um, you know, I've been a Christian for 10 years, uh, reading the Bible for most of those years. Um, and anytime I come across scripture that like, I, I have a hard time accepting, my first question just has to be, well, why? Why does Jesus care about this so much? What am I missing that this isn't a big deal to me, but it's so such a big deal to Jesus? And the first step, man, is just I had to get real with myself. I had to get real with what laziness looks like in my life. And man, the, the real, man, devastating and negative effects of, man, this core sin that I struggle with. And so I'd be like, oh, it's not that bad. Well, so what? I just sat around and did nothing. Man, why does Jesus take this so seriously? And so digging through, man, what laziness looks like in my life, um, it might look like in your life too, um, is uh, there's a lot of ways it plays out, but I think the main way that I struggle with, and I think that might be most relevant for us today, is I procrastinate. I'm a huge procrastinator, okay? I'm always putting things off to the last minute. Any of you guys out there, procrastinators? You don't have to raise your hand now. You can raise it later if you want. That's a little procrastination joke. Raise your hand later. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> okay. But here's the deal with procrastination, okay? It's a false peace. It's a false sense of peace because I'm just putting things off so I can feel at peace right now. So I don't have to deal with it right now. But man, those things catch up to you. So different things I procrastinate and then you might also. First, kind of obvious, I procrastinate tasks. Um, I've always struggled putting things off to the last minute um, because I just want to relax and do nothing. Um, and, and I'll just wait until I absolutely have to do it. Man, full disclosure, I had two months to prep this message. I waited till last week to even think about it. I put it off. I was lazy on a message about laziness. What am I doing? And man, so yeah, I put off tasks. And man, the problem is it just creates more work later. It creates more stress. Man, it's been a stressful week because I waited so long to even think about this. Man, stuff piles up. Um, and man, I just, I just developed such bad habits. You know, like one, one thing when I'm unhealthy, I just, I'll just kind of figure out, man, what is the, the lowest expectation that people have for me? Because that's what I'm going to meet. I set such a low bar for myself in high school. Um, my only goal in high school was to not get any Fs so I didn't, so I didn't have to go to summer school. Because the biggest thing I valued, the only thing I valued was my summer vacation, my summer break. I wanted a break. Um, I kid you not, my sophomore year, I got straight Ds, 1.0. Not to brag, straight D's, but I didn't have to go to summer school. That's all that was required of me. Um, and man, just doing the bare minimum. But I just developed such bad habits that I've really had to work hard to later in life to fix. Um, and also it's resulting in, man, people don't, people don't depend on you. Man, when you're constantly putting things off and not doing what you say you're going to do. Because, um, man, no one admires or respects a lazy person, okay? Have you ever gone up to the kid when you're doing like a group project? And like the kid who didn't contribute anything and it's like, wow, man, I really appreciate like your ability to like not work and just relax. That's so cool. Yeah, I was up all night stressing and having a panic attack and throwing up over like this project. But it's how great of you that you didn't, were you don't not even affected by it. That's great. Man, no one respects the lazy guy. Okay, man. And then people won't be able to depend on you. And in the end, you just kind of end up hurting yourself. Check out this proverb. From six, all these verses I'm sharing are just stabbing me straight in the soul this week. And it's, it's, it's just been bananas. But yeah, Proverbs six, I love this translation. It says, take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. I love that. My wife, that's what she always calls me when I'm being lazy, lazy bones, Jones. And look at, look at that word from God. So personal. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? This is screaming at me. I'm so often just asleep and numb to myself and the things going on around me. Man, when will you wake up? That's a little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will pounce on you like a bandit, and scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Man, laziness has consequences, and it catches up to you and will rob you of everything you need and have. Second thing I procrastinate, emotions, okay? We're getting a little bit deeper now. Yeah, task is obvious. I also procrastinate my emotions. I don't deal with difficult things in the moment. I put it off. I don't want to think about it. I'll just, I just think, oh, I'll just deal with that later and just stuff it down and pretend it's not there. Um, I've shared this before, um, and some of you guys might know this, but, man, my mom, she died from cancer um, when I was 21 years old. Um, and it was the longest time after where I could even talk about it out loud. 
because it was just too hard to talk about. I remember I was at a wedding. I was at a wedding two years after she passed away. Two years later, I was at this wedding, sitting at this table, and this lady that I hadn't seen in like forever, she's like, oh, dude, it's so good to see you. How's your mom doing? And I was like, oh, she's fine. She's fine. And um, that was just kind of like what came out. And my buddy who was standing next to me was like, dude, what do you mean she's fine? She's dead. <laughs> and I was like, oh, th- hmm. thank you, Steve. I almost forgot. Yikes, man. And the lady's like, why didn't you just say that? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Cause I don't, I don't, I just been, man, stuffing it down and ignoring it. I mean, think, I mean, how often do we do that? Man, pretend everything's okay when it's not. Ignore, man, the real things that are going on underneath because it's too hard to acknowledge and too hard to think about. Man, that stuff, man, you can't bottle up. It's going to come out eventually. Man, another thing I procrastinate is um, work, man, building relationships building real, genuine, meaningful relationships. Because, man, uh, something I've learned that's been a hard lesson to learn is that, man, healthy relationships, man, require conflict. And the problem is, man, yeah, I'm like, I like, I don't want to like, I like to get along with everyone, but, man, I get along with everyone. I'd be down to hang out with anyone, but I lack deep connection with anyone because I'm unwilling, uh, man, to enter into conflict and to have hard conversations, to dig deeper, to open up about things that are going on in my life. And, man, and I just, I hate conflict. It's the opposite of peace, right? If I think someone's going to like fight with me or start an argument, I just avoid them for weeks. This is a huge problem. Me and my wife started dating. She's like, hey, we need to talk. Like, oh, for sure. And I would just not (laughs) ignore her for two weeks until she forgot about it. It's not good (laughs) because you can't fight if I'm not around to fight with. Am I right? (laughs) Um, and then that's, this is what I do, but man, it's not healthy. Um, and, and then the last thing that's been, that I've been digging through a lot lately is I procrastinate God's calling on my life, man, the things God's calling me to do. I put it off. I'm like, yeah, I know I need to follow God. Yeah. I know I need to address that sin in my life. Yeah. I know I should read the, I should read my Bible. I should be in God's word. I'll do it later. And man, the problem that comes with that is I miss out on God working in my life. I miss out on it. Years go by and man, God hasn't done anything. I was like, man, where's God? Man, I've been asleep to what he's calling me to do. And man, that is my hope for you guys tonight, man. Don't miss out on what God has called you to do. This whole series, this whole series, right, has been all about, man, figuring out how God has wired you, how he's gifted you. He's given you a gift and a unique, man, uh, personality to man, bless the world with. So now let's jump back to that parable he shared before. Where he's saying, man, I gifted you so you could bring light and hope into a world where there's people who are lost and hurting and alone and you did nothing with it. That's wicked. It's lazy. It's selfish. Man, I gifted you for a reason. Man, to bless others. And man, um, man, don't miss out on what God is calling you to do. Because I've just missed out time and time again. And if you feel called to see, man, peace in the people and the world around you, um, this is a big uh, thing, kind of the main thing, that true peace comes from action, not avoidance. True peace comes from action, not avoidance. Uh, A quote I heard a little while ago that I loved, it says, "A a ship is safe in the harbor, but that's not what ships were made for. That, yeah, it might be safe and comfortable to just, man, ignore things, shut yourself in, uh, just kind of like let life go by, kind of binge out on, man, social media or Netflix or whatever it is and just ignore, man, all the things going on around you. But, man, that's not what you were made to do. And that's not what God's called you to do. Um, I'm not a fighter. I've never been in a fight, but I almost got in a fight like a little while ago. I was ready to uh, beat some fools up. Okay, let me tell you about this. I was out to dinner with my wife at this pretty nice restaurant. It's Rockin' Fondue. It's like our favorite spot. We go there like once a year because it's a little bit pricey, but we'll go there when we're like, you know, celebrating, you know, doing pretty well in life. And so we were out there, um, man, late one night. Uh, it was like around like 11 o'clock at night, and uh, we got charged too much. Um, uh, it was like 20 bucks too much. Um, so I punched the waiter. And that's not true. That's not the fight. It's coming. So I was making this whole fuss about, man, okay, I was like, oh, man, they charge us too much. And um, my wife, Sarah, she's like, okay, I'm just going to wait outside while you're dealing with this. And I was like, um, no, you shouldn't do that. It's late. It's dark out there. Um, that's a bad idea. She's like, it's not a big deal, whatever. So she just walks out, okay, and I'm stuck inside waiting for them to, like, figure this whole thing out. And all these scenarios are running through my mind, like, oh, my gosh, she's going to get stabbed and kidnapped, and I'm just going to be in here arguing over $20. What am I doing? And so finally they figure it all out, and I walk outside, and I see her at the end of the street on this corner sitting at this bench, and my, my worst fears were happening. These three dudes walked up to her and surrounded her, and I was like, oh, no, not today. I hit a light sprint. 
okay light sprint right at these dudes i'm like okay i'm gonna like end these dudes lives right now so i run up and i grab one dude. i just yell hey i grab one guy by the shoulder and pull him back okay and while i'm doing that i pick up the other guys are asking for directions to an ice cream place <laughs> So I've pulled this dude back, okay? Now I'm in a pretty awkward situation. Uh, the dude I pulled back is like, yo, dude, what's up? What's up? I was like, oh, hey, man, it's cool. And they had two friends across the street. And they're like, oh, what's up, tough guy? And they started like cussing at me and stuff. Like, come on, what's up? I was like, hey, guys. It's just straight back to like peacemaker mode. Like, it's cool. We're just going to go. This is my wife. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Big misunderstanding. <laughs> um, but, man, it was just like, it was just so intense. And, we, and yeah, we just we just walked away. And they're kind of like following us for a bit, yelling stuff. But it's fine. It's fine. I wasn't ready to like, you know, get beat up by five people. But yeah, man, um, but man, a lot of times, man, to bring peace is to step into things and as a step into where it's uncomfortable, man, to step into the midst of conflict, man, it's something you have to work for and fight for. It's miles and peace is, man, miles away of thinking like you can just go to a yoga retreat and feel peace. No, man, it's something you have to work for and fight for, even when it's hard and it's scary or it's painful. And man, this is what Jesus modeled. Man, the Bible calls Jesus the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. And what did Jesus have to go through to bring peace between God and his people? Man, the cross. That was painful. Something that he begged, God, if there's any other way, man, let that be the way. But he knew, man, this is the way to bring peace between God and his people. And that's what he stepped into. So to bring peace, man, you got to step into conflict, not avoid it. Man, start thinking about, man, how can you start being, be the one that brings peace between your friends when they're arguing and you can kind of see both sides and man, help bring them together. Man, peace at home when there's a conflict in your family. Man, how can you step into it and help bring peace instead of just locking yourself in your room? Man, how can you be one who's, man, stepping into it to bring peace? Because we need you to. Man, Jesus said this um, after he's explaining to the disciples that, yes, I'm going, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die for you. And he says, I've told you all this so you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Man, life is hard. You'll never be able to avoid, man, hard things. But Jesus can bring peace into your life in the midst of hard things and also work through you to bring peace to those around you if you're willing to try. Amen. That's my hope and my prayer for you guys to step into those things. Um, that's all I got. Hopefully this made sense. It was helpful. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Peace be with you. I'll see you around.